Hi. Today we're talking about Alice in Wonderland, which is probably the single most famous story ever, um, and has been incredibly influential on literature, on art, on music, sciences, mathematics, all of it. Um, so uh, this is an incredibly intricate, um, detailed work. Uh, Lewis Carroll buried a number of jokes, puzzles, uh, math problems, um, various contemporary references, as did Tennell, who was a political cartoonist during the era. And one of the reasons you're reading the annotated Alice version of this so that you don't miss any of that, so that you, you understand the full richness and intricacy of the story. Now, like I said, we could, we could spend an entire semester doing nothing but discussing this work, but we're not going to do that. Um, instead, um, we're going to hit some highlights of it and, and just talk about some of the most relevant aspects of it in today's uh, discussion. Now, one thing that I'd like to point out about Alice in Wonderland, and this is in strict contrast to things like uh, the Tolkien stories, the various quest stories that we've seen, is that Alice is not so much pursuing a, a goal, um, even though she, she really wants to get into that garden, um, but she's not on a quest so much as she's bumbling from one fantastic experience to another. And that's uh, part of the joy of this book, is Alice wandering into um, one situation after another and sort of trying to understand what's going on, what are the rules. Now, just like any other fantasy hero, um, she has help along the way. Um, the whole eat me, drink me, these magic mushrooms, um, these potions that she finds that control her size. She receives sage advice from uh, sagely figures like the, the caterpillar and the Cheshire cat. But Alice's uh, quest, if you even want to call it that, is very, very different from the quest of other characters. And this helps set the tone of children's fantasy that children's fantasy isn't generally about saving the world. Um, it's much more about sort of coming to terms with yourself, learning lessons. Now, um, if you want to look at the greater scope of, of children's literature, you do see these sort of epic quests, but they, they tend to have sort of a wonderland feel, feel to them. And the, the children are very much about sort of discovering themselves. Um, there are quite a few characters that are notable and are influential um, established in Alice in Wonderland. The, the Caterpillar and the Cheshire Cat, the Duchess, the Queen. Um, you see uh, in Carol's uh, sort of sequel to this, um, Alice Through the Looking Glass, a much more uh, coherent, uh, much more mature uh, story. But what's ironic is, is that um, even though Through the Looking Glass is much more like a conventional narrative, it's nowhere near as popular as Alice in Wonderland. To a certain degree, the sort of unpolished quality um, that Alice in the Wonderland has is what makes it so, so very good. Um, the fact that even though it is sort of a refined version of the story that Carol told uh, the real Alice Little um, on that one fateful day, um, it, it still has a lot of the sort of naive quality that, that makes uh, the story um, so beautiful. Um, I will talk to you next week.